NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 graphics card now reportedly to feature 9,728 cores and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It's going to be at 420 watts, 35% faster than the 3090 Ti. Similar to the RTX 4070 specifications from yesterday, we now have specifications update for the 4080 graphics cards too. So... The same leaker, Copite, had previously posted a slightly better core configuration for the RTX 4080, but it should be pointed out that NVIDIA makes several revision changes over a product's pre-launch cycle as such. The specifications change a lot, which Copite 7 Kimmy is simply reporting. The card now has the same amount of cores and memory, albeit at a much lower TGP than what was reported earlier. The NVIDIA... RTX 4080 is expected to utilize a cut down 8103 300 GPU configuration with 9,728 cores or 76 SMs enabled for a total of 84 units, whereas the previous configuration offered 80 SMs or 10,240 cores. While the full GPU comes packed with 64 megabytes of L2 cache, and up to 224 ROPs, the RTX 4080 might end up with 48 megabytes of L2 cache and lower ROPs due to this cut down design. The clock speeds are not confirmed yet, but considering that TSMC 4 nanometer process is being used, we are expecting clocks to be between 2 and 3 gigahertz range. The higher than usual clock speed bump comes from the fact that NVIDIA is making a 2 node jump considering the Ampere GPUs with Samsung 8 nanometer node was in reality a 10 nanometer process node with some optimizations. NVIDIA is skipping 7 nanometer and going straight for a 5 nanometer node and not even the vanilla variant, but an optimized version of it. With Pascal on the TSMC 16 nanometer node, NVIDIA delivered a huge frequency leap and we can expect a similar jump this time around too. As for memory specifications, the 4080 is expected to rock 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 capacities that are said to be adjusted at 21 gigabits per second speeds across a 256-bit bus. This will provide up to 672 gigabytes a second of bandwidth. This does mean that it does fall specification-wise on the memory side below the RTX 3080. And this is a problem for mining because that does mean outside of your core intensive algorithms, maybe something like Caspa, uh, maybe something like Flux or Ravencoin. Flux and Ravencoin technically do use a little bit of memory, so they're not quite on par, but it does mean that your mining performance on Ethereum, Ergo, all that sort of stuff for sure is gonna go down uh, from the previous generation. For example, here are the specifications for the RTX 3080, and you have a bandwidth of 760 uh, gigabytes per second. So you are losing about 100 gigabytes per second in the, with the current specifications. You can see here 672 uh, gigabytes a second, gigabytes a second. So you're getting a downgrade on the memory side of things. Technically, I think you're getting an increase in the actual running speed, but that will remain yet to be seen primarily due to the fact that we'll have to see how the heat reacts and all that sort of stuff. They had a lot of trouble getting up to 21 gigabits per second. You did get there on the 3090 Ti. So that's kind of all that going down. And for the power, the total board power is said to be rated at 420 watts. If we look at the 3080, <clears throat> your total or your TDP was 320 watts. So more power, uh, less memory performance, probably not going to be that good for mining. In terms of performance, the RTX 4080 is expected to offer 15,000 points in 3D Mark Time Spy Benchmark, which the leaker has previously stated as a conservative figure, so one can expect 35% performance uplift over the RTX 3090 Ti. <clears throat> as for its feature set, the 4080 graphics card will rock all modern NVIDIA feature sets, such as the latest 4th gen Tensor Cores, 3rd gen Ray Tracing Cores, the latest NVENC encoder and NVENC de uh, decoder and support for the latest APIs. They will pack all the modern RTX features such as DLSS, Reflex, 
broadcast, resizable bar, freestyle, ansel, highlights, shadow play, and G-Sync support too. The graphics card should launch around Q4 of 2022, or may even slip into Q1 of 23, but it should come priced at around $699 to $799. That pricing is a little bit better, but obviously we are kind of in a position where pricing on GPUs has come down. So there you go. What are we looking at with the 4080? We are looking at worst mining performance across the board from a memory perspective. You could see it perform really, really well in some more core intensive algorithms, like we said. Specifically, I think like the ones you would look at would be pure core intensive. So CASPA, for example, would be one. Uh, anything that's dual mineable, right? So your Alephium, uh, your... Uh, I forget all of them, but Caspa, Alephium, that sort of thing, right? Anything that you're able to dual mine with, technically that secondary algorithm will perform better. But on the memory side, you know, you're talking about 100 watt more on the TDP, about give or take, right? And you're talking about a reduction uh, by 100 gigabytes per second uh, of memory bandwidth. So, I'm not seeing it here as a good buy for miners. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions. Are you excited for the RTX 4000 series? Do you think it's going to be good for mining? I mean, you wrap in the requirement for the ATX 3.0 as well. And the possibility that you're going to have to upgrade all of your power supplies to support this because of the power spikes that are going to be going along with it. And I'm just not seeing it. Good news for the miners is that you should be able to purchase old 3000 series cards at a much cheaper price that do still perform very well on the memory side of things. And another good news, in other good news as well, of course, we have the Radeon RX 7000 series actually increasing their memory bandwidth on their top end up to 384 bits. So there will be that other possibility for a new mining card to perform well on the AMD Radeon side of things. So there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but like we've talked about before, there is an architectural shift in the GPU market away from big buses, that sort of thing, and moving over to the L2 cache, right? So what you see when you look at the differences in specifications between, you know, even the Radeon 5000 series and the 6000 series, as you saw them move to more cache, then they obviously created their infinity cache naming scheme or whatever. And that helped catch them up in traditional rasterization while reducing the size of their, their basically their memory bus and the speed of their memory, but then keeping up with the faster speed of the memory on NVIDIA side for traditional rasterization. NVIDIA saw that, and then now NVIDIA is kind of following suit. So we're seeing kind of this shift in design architecturally, and that does mean that your traditional mining performance will go down in most cases. That doesn't mean it will remain there, and I do want to make that very clear too, because just like the GPU market is changing all of the time, the crypto market is changing all of the time, and there are new algorithms being created every day. So there may be an algorithm or there may be a miner, like a piece of mining software that leverages this new architectural change in the GPU market. And then boom, all of a sudden these are good at mining for some sort of specific coin or with some sort of specific miner, so mining software. And that could be the case. But as it sits right now, if we go with what we know about the mining industry, the mining software that's available and the algorithms that are available, which ones are most profitable, it doesn't look like you would want to make the shift to the 4000 series from the 3000 series. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.